four minutes and 39 seconds to make up on the race leaders, Scherter and Lars Forster would have their work cut out for them on stage one. But they set out like a team on a mission. Their job of staying up near the front of the field was made easier by climbing from the gun. The route, along with a high pace at the front of the race, soon whittled down the lead group. Only the very strongest teams would be contesting for stage one honours. Though too early in the race to be the queen stage, it could, upon reflection, prove the pivotal day. The King's Climb was the first of the day's plethora of climbs. It stretched high above the urban sprawl of Somerset West into the pristine Helderberg Nature Reserve. Canyon Northwave's Andreas Seervolt and Martin Storsek were soon marshalling the pace. The pair had proven to be formidable climbers in the 2021 race and were soaring up the steepest gradients again on 2022 Stage 1. From the summit of King's Climb, the single track king, Nino Schurter, came to the fore. The Scots Ram star delivered a showcase of his vast array of technical skills, flowing and floating through the twisting trails. On the undulating trails through the famed Stellenbosch wine region, the group came back together. Along with Scott Sram and the men in yellow Toyota 91 Specialized were Canyon Northwave, Buff Megamo, Speed Company Racing, the two William Pirelli teams in Disaster Struck. Both Nino Schurter and Georg Egger punctured at the same moment. While Speed Company Racing got underway after bombing Egger's tyre, Scott Sram were less fortunate. Schurter was in the process of putting a tube into his rear wheel when the Scott Sram Duet team arrived on the scene. Andre Frischnick whipped out his rear wheel to replace Schurter's, but the puncture still cost him the best part of seven minutes. He was not the only one whose luck had failed. Matt Beers was battling. He had been vomiting and struggling to hold down food. There can be no worse place than the saddle to run flat, or to launch the second madcap chase in as many days. Having chased to catch up, the Speed Company racing team were the first to be forced off their bikes to push. Ahead, Matt Beers forged valiantly on. But the question loomed. Was the South African marathon champion riding himself into a hole he didn't have the energy to dig himself out of? When Canyon Northwave and Buff Megama upped their pace, Beers along with the Santa Cruz team were powerless to resist. Andreas Seervolt and Martin Stosek gradually edged away while Jose Diaz and Hans Becking gritted their teeth and followed as best they could. Behind, Maxi Marot and Chris Blevins were nursing their teammates Keegan Swenson and Matt Beers to the summit of the climb. On paper, easier kilometres were to come. Further back, the Willia Pirelli team of Fabian Ravensteiner and Bart Allemann led a tattered group to the top of the climb. The second half of the stage would be a battle of pure survival rather than a race to the finish. Except for Nino Schurter. He was on a charge to regain time and would drive Lars Forster relentlessly on. Over the summit, Buff Megamo regained contact with Canyon Northwave. Together, the teams worked to extend their advantage. Behind the leaders, Santa Cruz, Toyota 91 Specialized and the Willia Pirelli teams were in damage limitation mode though the latter were recovering best. Further back, Scott Sram were racing to make up as much time as possible after their pre-climb puncture. Nino Schurter was in full send mode. Simon Schneller and Urs Huber, meanwhile, were limping towards the finish. Their general classification hopes dashed by the saddle. Nibuko Typedev were losing time too, but their Rapsa African jersey rivals are hardly flying either, so their troubles were not as catastrophic. Unaware of the destruction behind them, Andreas Seervolt and Martin Storsek were forging ahead. The Canyon Northwave team had distanced Buff Megabo and were leading solo. But the Dutch-Portuguese combination were not letting them slip away easily. Down the trail, Scott Sram had caught the speed company racing at Scott Calabandida teams. While Schurter's charge was paying dividends, Matt Beer's troubles were deepening. Even helping hands from his partner Plevins were not aiding him in maintaining momentum. He would have been highly envious of the easy pace of Seervolt and Storsek. The Canyon Northwave team powered through the final kilometers and raced to a commanding stage victory. There can be no doubt after that performance, they are the new favorites for the Absa Cape Epic title. But as the race thus far has proved, one day's winners can quickly become the next day's losers. Jose Diaz and Hans Becking crossed the line in second, 
but were a distant 3 minutes and 23 seconds behind the stage winners. One minute and 26 seconds later, Fabian Rabensteiner and Wout Allemann completed the podium for Willia Pirelli. A storming ride saw Nino Schurter and Lars Forster cross the finish line in fifth place. An exhausted and drained looking Matt Beers rolled into Lawrenceford in 12th on the day. It will take a Herculean effort to turn the negative momentum positive for the Toyota 91 Specialized team on stage two. Especially as Canyon Northwave MTB now hold all the cards. Andreas Seerwalt and Martin Stosek's winning time was 3 hours 58 minutes and 23 seconds. The story of the day was behind the podium places, however, where Nino Schurter and Lars Forster's fight back and Matt Beers and Chris Blevins' hemorrhaging of time drew attention. Scott Sram limited their losses to 5 minutes and 12 seconds, while Toyota 91 Specialized conceded 9 minutes and 21 seconds. This means that Canyon Northwave now lead the 2022 Absa Cape Epic over Buff Megamo by 5 minutes and 4 seconds. Santa Cruz are 3rd, Toyota 91 Specialized 7th and Scott Sram 8th. Insect Sciences' Keegan Bontekoening and Arno de Troy moved into the top 10, claiming the Absa African jerseys in the process. looking to defend and Toyota 91 Specialized starting their task of chipping away, the Stage 2 start was not overly aggressive. Perhaps this was also due to the sheer number of kilometers ahead of them. Yet once the teams got racing, the pace edged up, especially as Buff Megamo came to the to proceedings. The route from the Helderberg Basin into the Hottendots Holland Mountains looming, the elite men had to up their pace. It would not do for the leaders to reach the portage with too many teams in contention. This would only lead to congestion on the narrow hiking trail. Thus, in cool conditions under overcast skies, the men took on the portage. Team Bulls Huber led the run up the path, having navigated it numerous times before. Behind him, all manner of bike pushing, carrying and generally manhandling. But there is only so fast one can walk or run up the Khantu Pass. No significant gaps are forged on the portage and the major men's teams are all in contention as they flew through the single tracks of Elgin. All that is, aside from the Santa Cruz and William Pirelli teams. The third and fifth place general classification teams at the start of the day were not in the Scott Sram group. Specialized Buff Megamo 1 and 2, Scott Sram Due, Speed Company Racing and Team Bulls were. Having descended into the Overberg, Urs Huber and Nino Schurter forced an unlikely split on the Fundestel Pass district road. The smooth gravel seemed an unlikely moment to attack. Nonetheless, it forced Canyon Northwave onto the back foot. In the men's race, Nino Schurter and Lars Forster went on the offensive on Jacques' climb. The Scots Ram combination had 8 minutes and 45 seconds to make up on the general classification and had to be aggressive. Their pace put Team Bulls in trouble. While the other teams were just about staying within touching distance of the charging Swiss pair. Then, for the third day in a row, a puncture scuppered Scott's Ram's best laid plans. This time, fortunately for Schurter and Forster, it cost them seconds rather than minutes. A quick plug and a CO2 bomb solved the issue. The stop nonetheless took all the impetus from their move. The Toyota 91 Specialized led chase group had Scott Sram in their sights. And within moments of having got underway again, the chasers regained contact with the leaders. A gusting headwind then nullified any further chances of aggressive racing. The final 20 kilometers would be ridden in close formation, battling the southeaster as much as the riders around them. The only real imperative was to maintain the advantage to the next group on the road. While Scott Sram and Toyota 91 Specialized would not be gaining time on Canyon Northwave and Buff Megamo, there were other teams that they were bumping out of the top five general classification places.
Those losing out included Speed Company Racing, Scott Calabandida and DMT Racing. The run into the pecking, Jose Diaz, Matt Beers, Chris Blevins, Nino Schurter and Lars Forster to duke it out for stage honours. And there was no stopping Scott Sram. While Plevins forced his way past Schurter and Forster, they were never troubled by Beers, Becking and Diaz. After two days of disappointment, Scott Sram had their stage win. Despite puncturing again, Nino Schurter and Lars Forster went some way to overturning their epic misfortunes by winning stage two. Matt Beers and Chris Plevins were 0.5 of a second behind with Buff Megamo in third. Canyon Northwave's fourth place was more than enough to maintain their grip on yellow. Andreas Seerwald and Martin Stosek's general classification lead is now 4 minutes and 55 seconds over Hans Becking and Jose Diaz. Toyota 91 Specialized moved up to... Weather after two days of heat and a day of wind remained mercifully benign on stage three. But where the temperatures stayed cool, the racing was red hot from the off. Matt Beers had clearly recovered from the bug which laid him low two days before. The Toyota 91 specialized man stretched the group right off the start line and tore up the orchard climb out of Elonskruf. The speed company racing team of Georg Egger and Lukas Baum were hot on his heels. Having finished 2nd, 7th and 5th on the race thus far, the Germans were working with a plan on the 4th day of the race. Early kilometres at a terrifying pace. In fact, they averaged over 33 kilometres an hour for the first hour. The pace led to stress in the group. Wheels touched and tensions frayed. Despite the shaking of heads, no real damage was done. At least until the speed company racing team came to the fore. Then the group blew apart and Sergio Manticon Guterres of Scott Calabandida broke his chain. Perhaps an illustration of the what's required to remain in contention for the 2022 APSA Cape Epic title. Joining Edgar and Lucas Baum off the front were Marco Hubert and Peter de Toy, Maxi Marotta and Keegan Swenson, and most ominously, Nino Schurter. The men in yellow, Andreas Sjöwald and Martin Storsek of Canyon Northwave, had been weary of a move of exactly this sort. The only silver lining was the presence of Lars Forster in the chase group. The chasers were thus never going to let that group get too much of an advantage without a fight. Former marathon world champion Thiago Ferreira and his DMT racing partner Miguel Munoz Moreno were leading the pursuit. The pace required to stay in the break proved too much for Mbuko Taipdev and the South Africans had to throttle back. As did Nino Schurter after Lars Forster had been unable to bridge across to the leaders on the trails. They had taken their toll on the European cross-country champion. In the heat of the chase, Canyon Northway punctured. This left Sirvolt and Stosek in the precarious position of a solo pursuit. Encouraged by their success, Speed Company Racing and Santa Cruz forged on. Behind, there were more punctures, this time for Buff Megabuzz, Enrique Vergara and Hugo Drescho. The Spanish team's troubles were perfectly timed, however. The flying Canyon Northway pair caught them as they fixed their puncture. Vergara and Drescho were thus able to hitch a ride back to the group. None of this was any concern for Georg Egger and Lucas Baum. Having received little aid from Santa Cruz's Marotta and Svensson, the Speed Company racing combination were unfazed when their breakaway companions dropped off the pace. The final 55 kilometers would be a two-up team time trial for the young Germans, while the French and American behind battled to maintain their second position on the trails. In the strung out chase group, the single file line meant that teammates were separated. Near the front, Hans Becking was thus unaware that Jose Diaz had punctured. Fortunately, Buff Megamo 2 were on hand to provide a replacement front wheel. Their teamwork perfectly illustrated to speed company racing. But doing so would be tough with Toyota 91 specialized in hot pursuit. The route pointing skyward once more for a final loop which featured two brutal climbs played into the leader's hands. The Beers Express was forced to slow. 
With their yellow jerseys in growing danger, Canyon Northwave had to respond too. Having spent the best part of 40 kilometers on their own already, Georg Eger and Lucas Baum were unfazed at being out front alone. Matt Beers and Chris Blevins, having shared Santa Cruz, were no longer dragging anyone with them and were free to chase at their own pace, though the terrain was making that tough. For the back, Santa Cruz were fading through the field, passed by the charging Andres Sirvolt and Martin Storsek. There would be no catching Georg Eger and Lucas Baum, however. Speed Company Racing were unrelenting in their drive to the finish line. Even hitting the fields of Ilanskurf didn't slow them down. They only slowed to celebrate after their victory was sealed. Toyota 91 Specialized crossed the line second, exhausted but happy with their efforts. Canyon Northway completed the podium, limiting their time losses with another stellar performance. In fact, their advantage was only trimmed by 10 seconds to the new holders of second place overall. Speed Company Racing's victory was concluded in a time of 3 hours, 48 minutes and 33 seconds. Georg Ega and Lucas Baum were 2 minutes and 15 seconds faster over the 101 km course than Matt Beers and Chris Blevins. Andreas Sirvolt and Martin Storsek were third, 1 minute and 12 seconds behind Toyota 91 Specialized. Scott Sram's difficulties saw them finish 12th on the day and concede 9 minutes to the stage winners. The stage results mean that Canyon Northwave lose time to Speed Company Racing, who move into second and Toyota 91 Specialized. Buff Megamo dropped from second to fourth. Imbuco Type Dev strengthened their grip on the Red Apps African jerseys and line ninth overall. The rest of the elite men's field would have to be weary. Which is probably why the Canyon Northwave men made it their mission to lead the group out of Elonskloof. The race leaders did not simply block the road, however, they kept the tempo high too. Climbing through the outskirts of Gernandal, the speed hardly dipped, and soon the bunch was stretched out into a tattered string of individual riders. This allowed Speed Company Racing, Canyon Northwave, Toyota 91 Specialized and Imbuco Type Dev to slip off the front once more. In the chase group, Toyota 91 Specialized 2 were having their best days since the prologue. Cameron Mason had been struggling on the long and rough stages, but gradually the cyclocross star was finding his marathon mountain bike legs, though his focus still wavered from time to time. At the sharp end of the men's race, the Speed Company racing team continued to do their best to extend their lead. But with the chase group swelling behind, the pace in pursuit never relented. Buff Megamo's Hans Becking and Jose Diaz, along with the Scott Calabandida team of Sergio Manticon Gutierrez and Francesc Guerra Caratero, had joined the second group on the trail. The group was still being driven on by Matt Beers of Toyota 91 Specialized. Chris Blevins, Andres Sirvalt and Martin Storsek were sandwiched between Beers and the new arrivals. Looking back down the switchbacks, Eger and Baum could see their lead evaporating. Though not all the teams grinding their way up the Barkenskop single track climb would be able to make it back to the front of the race. Yet at the Absa Cape Epic, even top 20 results are fiercely contested, so every team fought on, racing to their limits. Knowing that if Speed Company Racing could slip out of sight again, they could be gone for good. With that in mind, Toyota 91 Specialized took added risks on the Barkenskop descent, distancing Canyon Northway. On the valley floor between the high points of the Barkenskop and UFO climbs, the leading three teams found themselves in team versus team time trials, racing to close the gaps and bring the race back together or racing to avoid that happening. Despite their best efforts, Speed Company Racing were being reeled in. Before the road could ramp up for the day's final climb, the group came together, setting up a dramatic finale. 
mountain road is exceptionally steep, which is the case for parts of UFO. Though it ramps up to extreme gradients and then slacks off again to a more manageable pitch. Despite these changes in gradient, the group remained resolutely together, knowing that a stage victory and potentially time for the general classification battle was at stake. The group summited together and then set off on the technical descent along a treacherous shale single track. Having got to the front, Martin Stosek controlled the pace. But once the trail widened to a dual track, it descended into a free-for-all and the race was once again on the verge of being blown open. Fortune favoured the brave, yet all were equal to the task. When the road levelled out, a sprint finish was inevitable. Chris Plevins prepared Matt Beers' drivetrain for the assault of Watts. In the final 500 metres, Blevins kicked. The short course world champion showed his rivals a clean pair of heels, leaving Georg Egger and Lukas Baum and Stosek in his dust. Matt Beers crossed the finish line first, was joined by Andreas Sirvold and watched as Blevins powered around the final bend and home to victory. It was a well-worked move which proved the tactical nous of the Toyota 91 specialized men. Bear were understandably delighted with their effort and were joined on the podium by Canyon Northwave and Speed Company Racing, who shared wry smiles at being outfoxed. Matt Pierce and Chris Blevins' stage win was completed in 3 hours, 19 minutes and 22 seconds, two seconds faster than Andres Sirvalt and Martin Stosek. Georg Ege and Lukas Baum were six seconds further adrift. Behind them, Trek Voda and Toyota 91 Specialized 2 had their best days of the race, finishing fifth and eighth respectively. Canyon Northwave's six-second edition takes their lead over Speed Company Racing to 4 minutes and 48 seconds. Toyota 91 Specialized remained third at 6.50. Ibuko Type Dev in ninth remained the best-placed Absa African jersey team.